If you'd like to code along with this little tutorial video, in the description below you'll find a link to the GitHub repository where you can find the starter code for this. Included on that site in the readme file um, are some instructions on how to set up that starter code and to actually get the website itself started. So we're going to come into our terminal window here and go ahead and type in npm start which will actually run the application and should open the, um, the actual web page in, in your default web browser. So here's our car tool application. Very simple little application. We have the ability to come in and edit a row, change something, click save. We also can come in and click edit, change something, but then click cancel and then it doesn't save. We have the ability to add cars like that and we can also click on delete. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at how to improve the performance here of our car form. So if we come over to our editor over here, you'll see we have this top level app component. And then underneath of it, we've got tool header, car table, and car form. Now let's take a look at car form over here. We'll scroll down to the render method and we're going to go ahead and say console.log car form rendering. Now I'd like you to notice something interesting here. This car form is going to render even when we're not changing anything about the car form itself. So for example, if we come back over to the web browser and open up our developer tools, you'll see it says car form rendering. Now watch what happens when I click edit. When I click edit, it rendered the car form again. When I click cancel, it rendered it again. But we didn't actually change anything in the car form. Why is this occurring? It's occurring because if you come back over to app, you'll notice that car form and car table are siblings underneath of app. And inside of app, what are we managing? We're managing the ability to actually set the edit car ID. That's how we determine whether to show the view row or the edit row. Well, because the state is being managed here inside of app, every time that state changes, it actually re-renders app, which unfortunately also includes the re-rendering of car form. So let's head over to car form and take a look at it here real quick. So here in car form, you'll notice we're using a class based component. We're using a class based because we have state. Now, of course, we could use the state hook, but a lot of folks have older components. They've coded with classes. And so how would you go about improving the performance of this existing component without having to make use of things like the, the actual memo function or stuff like that? So to improve the performance here, we can use what's called a pure component. So we'll say pure, pure. Now what this is going to do is going to function similar to the memo function that we use for functional components. It'll actually look at the props that are being passed in. And as long as we're passing the same primitive values or object references on those props, it won't trigger a re-render. So let's see what actual props are being passed into car form over here in app. Well, over here in app, car form's receiving two props, add car and then this on submit car. Well, the problem here is, is that add car itself is fine, the actual button text, because it's going to be hard coded, it never changes. But what's going to happen here is with the pen car is, is each time we re-render app here, it's actually going to recreate this a pen car function. So in addition to saying pure component over on car form, we also need to ensure that we're passing the same function reference through on each render um, as much as possible. And, and what I mean by that is, is we'll still need to create like a new function each time cars changes, but as long as the array of cars hasn't changed, we can use the same append car function. So let's come over to here and we're gonna say use callback and we'll say use callback here and come down here and we're going to set up our dependency which is the array of cars and now it'll use that it'll use the same callback over and over and over again as long as we don't change the array of cars which should improve the performance of our page so now if we come over to here you'll see on the initial load it did re-render car form and then over here we're going to click edit and notice car form did not render again we'll click cancel car form did not render now, of course, if you type into car form, it'll re-render because we're changing the internal state of car form. And of course, if I click add car, then it will re-render because we've modified the car array. 
But if we're just doing operations here inside the table in terms of clicking edit and cancel, it's not going to unnecessarily re-render car form.